This video is about reducing fractions to lowest terms, sometimes called simplifying fractions. So let's start with this example. We have the fraction 2 sixths, or 2 over 6, and we want to reduce it. We begin by looking at the numerator and denominator and see if there's something we can divide evenly into both of them. And the answer is yes, we can divide 2 into them. So 2 divides into 2 one time, and 2 divides into 6 three times. In other words, 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times 3 is 6. So we haven't really changed the fraction. We've just written it in a different way. Now, if we think about it, we could also write this as 2 halves times 1 third. Because if we have two fractions and we have them multiplied, basically we multiply the numerator times the numerator. That would get us back to the original two. And we multiply the denominator times the denominator. That gets us back to the original six. Now, if we look at this two over two, that equals one. Well, multiplying anything by one doesn't really change it. So we don't need this. Therefore, we can cross it out. Now we're left with just one third. And that's going to be our answer. Here's another problem. Let's take the fraction 10 fifteenths, or 10 over 15. Well, I know that any number that ends in a 5 is divisible by 5. Any number that ends in a, in a 0 is divisible by 5. So this is 2 times 5. And this is, let's see, this is 5 times 3. Now I haven't got my fractions written as if it's a, there's a 5 over 5, but I could rewrite the order of these as 5 times 2 and 5 times 3. And then I could think of this part as just a 1 and cross it out. The point I wanted to make here by doing it that way is to say that we don't really have to rewrite this. We could just decide we're going to cross out a 5 from the denominator and a 5 from the numerator, and that will still get me 2 times 3. I can't reduce this anymore, so 2 thirds is going to be my answer. <clears throat> Here we've got an improper fraction. There's nothing special about this. All it means when we say an improper fraction is that the numerator is bigger than the denominator. Once again, I'll find a number I can divide into both of them. In this case, it's going to be 2. And I can rewrite this as 2 times 5 and write, rewrite this as either 2 times 3 or 3 times 2. Cross these out and I get 5 thirds. Now you may see some people do this in a kind of a shorthand method, so let's show an alternative way of doing it. I could just take this, let me write it a little bigger, 10 over 6, and say to myself, I know I can divide them both by 2, so I'll just do that. This divided by 2, 10 divided by 2 becomes a 5, 6 divided by 2 becomes a 3, and that will get me my 5 thirds. Either way, we get the same answer. What's nice about these is you can check them. So let's do one and then see how to check the answer. Okay. 30 divided by 42, or 30 over 42. Actually, I'm going to rewrite this to give myself a bit more room, and I'm going to do a bit of the work mentally and just say to myself, well, I know I can divide 30 and 42, both of them by 2, because they're both even. So when I divide 30 by, by 42, I'll get a 15. When I divide 42 by 2, let's see, 2 into 4 is 2, and 2 into 2 is 1, so I'll get a 21. I look at them again and I realize I could divide them both by, by 3. So 15 divided by 3 is 6. 21 divided by 3 is 7. 
I'm sorry, 15 divided by 3 is 5. Probably had you wondering what I was doing. And that's going to result in 5 over 7. I can't reduce either one anymore. So my answer is going to be 5 sevenths. Now, I said we could check these. So let's go back and look at the original example. It was 30 over 42. Now, if we take the answer that we had, which was 5 sevenths, and write its reciprocal. A reciprocal, by the way, is nothing more than a fraction turned upside down, inverted. So 5 sevenths becomes 7 fifths. Well, if we take the original problem and multiply it by the reciprocal of the answer, we should get 1. Let's see if that works. So 7 times this 0 will give me a 0. 7 times 3 will give me 210 for my numerator. 5 times 2 is 10. Carry a 1. 5 times 4 is 20. So 21. 21 over 21 equals 1. So my answer checks. Once again, to check the answer, all you do is take the original problem, 30 divided by 42 in this case, then take the answer, 5 over 7, write its reciprocal, multiply the two fractions, and you should end up with 1 as your answer. If you do, then your whole problem, your, your solution is correct. We've got time for a few more. So why don't we do this? Why don't you take a look at these three, pause the video, work out your own answers, and then we'll see what they come to when you come back. Okay? So take a moment, pause the video, work them out. Okay, let's see what we have here. So, 300 over 200. Well, I can just meant, I can just divide by 100, which means I'm crossing out two zeros in each case. This becomes three halves. 33 over 77. These look like I should be able to divide them by 11 each. If I do, let's go back to our original way. I'm going to get 11 times 3, 11 times 7. 11 over 11 is 1, so I don't need to write that. My answer is going to be 3 sevenths. The last of these should give us a little more work to do. Let's make some room. 24 over 120. When I have something like this, and I see that both of the, of the, the numerator and the denominator are even, I figure the easiest thing to do is divide, divide them both by 2. So 24 divided by 2, let's see, 2 into 2 is 1, 2 into 4 is 2. 120 divided by 2, 2 into the 12 would get me a 6. I've got a 0 here, so that's just going to be 60. I can divide by 2 again. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 60 divided by 2 is 30. And then I may see that, oh, I can divide them both by 6. I won't worry about the fact that I could keep dividing by 2. So 6 into 6 will give me a 1. 6 into 30 will give me a 5. So the answer is 1 fifth. And quickly, we can check that. 24 over 120 times the reciprocal of 1 fifth is 5 over 1. 5 times 24, not much room is 120. 1 times 120 is 120. This equals 1. It works. That's about all the time we have, so I'm going to stop this now. See you during the next, at the next video.